So today I'm going to be installing this Hive thermostat on a combi boiler which has radiators and underfloor heating. Now this is a standalone stat, it does not have the hub so the customer cannot run their heating from their smartphone. So let's get on with it and change a Nest thermostat for a Hive thermostat. Now we're replacing this Nest thermostat which seems to have broken after a power surge. Now this is the wiring I'm going to be altering, but first of all I need to use this plug socket down here at the bottom to help me with safe isolation. So I'm just using my socket and C socket tester to make sure I've got polarity and earth loop impedance, which I have. Now I know this socket is live, I'm just going to prove my non-contact voltage indicator to just see if the power is actually on to all the wires. So I've just proved it. So the pump's running, we've got power to the zone valve, we've got power up to the stats, and we've got power to the boiler. Now the customer doesn't know where the fuse spur is for the boiler, so we're having to turn off the MCB that feeds it. That's the one. My plan now is to lock off the MCB. So it's a good job I've got one of these socket and C MCB lock off kits. It comes with the little device and two of these do not operate labels. So let's go and get that on first and make sure we're safe. This is actually set to zero. If you want to change it, you press that down there and then you can move the numbers. So if we move it to one, that's now changed to one. So what we need to do is you line these up, put that in, move the numbers. So we'll move them to two. That's now locked. So if we move them back to one, that's now unlocked. So we can Put the sign through there, turn off the MCB. You screw that down like that. Make sure this is in line, turn it in line, press that down, move the numbers, and this now cannot be turned or removed. So now I need to carry out my safe isolation procedure. So I need to carefully remove this tangle of wires out of this incredibly small box. So first thing, I'm gonna prove my two pole testers working with my previous unit. So I'm testing from the earth wire to all the live wires that go to the stat. So now I know that the power has been correctly isolated, I can now remove this receiver. Now before I remove the wires and install a new junction box, what I've done is I've worked out which is my live, neutral and earth and my switch live wires going to the boiler. Now the wiring on this thermostat is pretty straightforward, so let's get to the board and have a look and see exactly how I am going to be wiring it. Now I've created a colour coded drawing. I was hoping it was going to uh, make it a lot easier, but it doesn't look that way, does it? Anyway, I'll try and explain how I wired this system up to make it work. Now, we couldn't find the few spur, and we couldn't even find all the wiring and the zone valves for the radiators. Customer had no clue where they were, and I wasn't going to start taking up carpets and floorboards, so we had to go with what we had. All I figured out was what was the live neutral and earth going up to the boiler, and what the switch live was when I stripped all the wires. Now, then, I've put live neutral and earth into these first three here. So let's take the hive, what we've installed. The hive required a live and neutral. Now there's also an earth connection there, which I didn't use because it's plastic and it doesn't really need it. So I've drawn the neutral, I used links so I wasn't trying to cram all the wires into the same block. 
So this is the neutral here, so it's feeding the nest, it's feeding the hive, and it's feeding the pump being linked across here, which is feeding the boiler, coming from the fuse spur and going to the zone valve. Now, how does it work? So, we have a live connection going into the hive, a permanent live, which I then linked with a little link. Rather than using another wire from here, I just linked it across into one which is common. Then when it switches over, it takes 230 volts down here for our switch live wire. So, power goes in, start opens the switch, it then puts 230 volts down here. This now operates the brown down the brown wire and operates the motor on the zone valve. Also, I had to use the pump live wire. So instead of using the switch live, I had to use coming from the stat live. So the calling for heat because the nest stat it was also wired into the same switch live wire so when that was running and the underfloor wasn't it was bringing the pump on so the pump was staying on all the time so the way I got over that was just by wiring it in so the pump will only run when the stat is calling for heat I would not have installed underfloor heating the way that was but anyway that's another story now when the brown gets power to it it moves the motor, which then makes the micro switch. Once the temperature is reached, the stat breaks the electrical supply to the motor. The spring then takes the motor back to its closed position, turning off the flow of water. So I didn't have a great pen. I've had to do it in purple. So that's our grey wire coming across here, which is a permanent life. As the valve knocks over, it then sends 230 to 250 volts down the orange wire, which is our switch live wire, which then goes into this little link and then off and feeds the boiler. So that's basically how I wired it up. So neutral and earth for the pump, coming from here. The power for the pump was actually coming from the stat. So as the stat was made, it brought the pump on. It also operated the zone valve and it was a zone valve which brought the boiler on. Hopefully that makes some sense. Now, just a word of warning, this thermostat is open therm compatible. So what that means is do not put 230 volts AC to this little black connector here because if you do, you will blow up your thermostat. So you have been warned. So that's the receiver backplate all wired in and the wiring sensors all wired in. So let's go and disconnect our lock off device on the MCB so we can test it all. Then once you put the numbers in line, pull this up, unscrew this, and it drops on the floor. <laughs> so that's how the MCB or the Miniature Circuit Breaker Lock-Off Kit works. Now before I actually pair the thermostat, I'm going to check I've wired it right. So I'm going to manually operate it. So press the button, pumps come on. You can see the zone valve is going across. The micro switch has just clicked. Everything seems to be working. So to turn it off, just press the button. It will flash for a while, but be patient. Pairing the thermostat to the receiver was incredibly easy. It was that easy, I forgot to film it. So basically you hold the bottom button down for around 10 seconds, and then the light at the top starts to flash. You then basically put the batteries into the thermostat and it just automatically paired in about five seconds for me. Once it's paired, the light at the top goes solid green. 
Now the customer wanted the thermostat on the wall where the old Nest one was and the back plate for this hive actually went in the same holes as the Nest one did. To attach the thermostat to the back plate, it just clicks in. So let's test the thermostat is working. So I've got it in manual mode, so I'm gonna go higher than the temperature. So I'm gonna put it 25 degrees. So now we should get a green light at the bottom of the receiver. There we go. We should now get the pump on, which we have. The zone valve should now click over and we should hear the micro switch make. So that all seems to be working. So let's turn it off. So in reverse order. So press the button in turn it lower than the room temperature is then we should get the green light start flashing and then once it goes off we should lose signal to the pump and the zone valve there we go so the valve's going back and the pump's gone off. So that's all working. So now we can put the cover back on the wiring centre and show the customer how to work the thermostat. So press the middle button to wake it up. It's showing the room temperature. Press these three little lines. So it's on heat. We press that again. We're going to turn it to manual setting. Press that. Press the green tick. And we're now in manual mode. To put it back in schedule, because the thermostat's already awake, press the three buttons, press the schedule, press resume, and press the green tick. It's easy as that. So that's how I changed a Nest thermostat for a high thermostat, which is working a combi boiler with radiators and underfloor heating. Hopefully you've liked the video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.